what's it like for, you know, on a Tuesday afternoon for an average North Korean Christian? They're walking home through and they're going to pass by one of 40,000 statues or monuments to Kim Il-sung or Kim Jong-il. And now we've got two murals to Kim Jong-un. They're going to, to be in, in the Wednesday lecture at their workplace in which um, they receive the latest information about Kim Jong-un's wife. They're going to have their kids come home from school and your kids have all of the, the latest stories and they're required to memorize 100 stories of the life of Kim Il-sung, even up to the PhD level in nuclear science, right? If you're a North Korean rocket scientist, one third of your PhD work will be in the ideology of the Kim family. Jesus never promised his followers an easy path. In fact, he told his disciples that the world would hate them. He sent them out as sheep among wolves. Jesus' words came true in the life of the apostles, and they're still coming true today in the lives of his followers around the world. Join host Todd Nettleton as we hear their inspiring stories and learn how we can help, right now on The Voice of the Martyrs Radio Network. Welcome again to The Voice of the Martyrs Radio. My name is Todd Nettleton. We are connected across many miles of internet cable with Dr. Eric Foley. He is the CEO of VOM Korea based in Seoul, uh, our sister mission office in Seoul, Korea. Uh, let's start, Eric, with some North Korea news. And I know you find North Korea, as I do, endlessly fascinating. In fact, I recall one of our previous conversations, I I called North Korea amazing, I think was the word I used. And a yeah. listener wrote in and said, how can you compliment North Korea? And I said, I wasn't complimenting them. It's amazing. Yeah, sure. It, it right, just right. raises amazement. Recently in the news, Kim Jong-un has been photographed with his young daughter. There are people who, who read those tea leaves who say, oh, they're revealing that this daughter will be the next generation of the Kim family. What do you hear about North Korea? Are there any changes, any changes on the horizon? And especially for us at Voice of the Martyrs, is there anything on the horizon that would affect how our Christian brothers and sisters in North Korea are treated? If you look back a year ago, five years ago, 10 years ago, almost every prediction about North Korea has been absolutely dead wrong. What we can take from the appearance of Kim Jong-un's daughter it relates to Kim Jong-un's portrayal. Kim Jong-un is revered, and so now we're seeing portraits, and so we're seeing more about his family. We're seeing, you, you have the portrayal of not only Kim Jong-un, but his wife and his daughter as being revered personages in North Korea. So I think what we have to say is, is that North Korea has had continuous leadership from the same family, and that that leadership has not deviated from the same basic principles. Those basic principles include the recognition that Christianity is an existential threat to the North Korean state. And there's no sign that that will change, regardless of who the leader is. It's interesting to me that they are portraying Kim Jong-un as it, it's sort of a father figure now more than, yes, than absolutely. previously. And I, the thing it reminds me of as as you know, we worked on the book about the church in North Korea. I went through lots of uh, propaganda paintings, and I'll I'll never forget one of uh, Kim Il Sung, the the founder of North Korea, kneeling in the snow to tie a soldier's boot. Uh, yeah, yeah. Which, you know, look at he's the servant of the people. He's a father figure for all of us. He kneels down and and ties our boots in the snow. And it seems like they're kind of presenting that same fatherly paternal picture now of Kim Jong-un, maybe using some of those pages out of the playbook from Kim Il-sung. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think, Todd, people uh, may have a misconception that when Kim Jong-un became the leader of North Korea, that he entered the same level of reverence in the same pantheon as his, as his father and his grandfather. And that was not true. For the first time on Kim Jong-un's birthday this past year, uh, kids received candies and the elite families in the North Korean hierarchy received these very lavish packages of different meats and rare food items and things like that. Kim Jong-un is entering a new period of his rule where he, he's well beyond where his grandfather was at the same age in terms of the level of reverence that he receives from North Korean people appearing in murals, being portrayed as, as a father of the people, receiving the titles that he has. These are things that his father and grandfather did not have. Just There's no parallel for it. There's loyalty tests. 
There's, there's special education seminars. That's what's happening in North Korea. And that always impacts Christians because for Christians, the main issue they face is the issue of the first commandment, which is what does it mean to have no other God before God? And so that's the issue that's being forced. North Korean Christians have to deal with it every day. Every time there's a new mural, every time that there's a new uh, speech to study, every time that there's new history to memorize, you know, how do we deal with functioning in the society without having to defect from the country? How can we say and be faithful Christian witnesses here? So how does someone follow Christ in, in the midst of all of this? How, what does it look like to be a Christian on, on a, you know, on a Tuesday in North Korea? What, what I think is the most remarkable thing is, is that if you ask the question, where is the church growing faster, North Korea or South Korea? You know, uh, I, I think people in the West are saying, oh, it's got to be South Korea. They have the 10, large, 10 of the 11 largest churches in the world. They send out more missionaries than any other country but the U.S. But the South Korean church has been in numeric decline, just like the Western church, since 1989. But at this time, the North Korean church continues to grow. And by all objective estimates... Christianity continues to spread in a country where Bibles are illegal, where every church building was seized, where even the slightest hint of evidence of Christian behavior will get you executed. How does that happen? And the answer can only be God. So it also happens because North Koreans are not hunkered down waiting for a regime change. They just pray for their leader, just like the Bible says. And they, they pray that he'll come to know the Lord. And what's it like for, a, you know, on a Tuesday afternoon for an average North Korean Christian? Well, they're, they're walking home through and they're going to pass by one of 40,000. That's an actual number, 40,000 statues or monuments to Kim Il-sung or Kim Jong-il. And now we've got two murals to Kim Jong-un. So they're going to pass by those. And in, in every case, they have to make some show of reverence. They're going to, to be in in the Wednesday lecture at their workplace in which um, they receive the latest information about Kim Jong-un's wife and why she should be revered at the same level as Kim Il-sung's husband. They're going to have their kids come home from school and your kids have all of the, the latest stories and they're required to memorize 100 stories of the life of Kim Il-sung, even up to the PhD level in nuclear science, right? If you're a North Korean rocket scientist, one third of your PhD work will be in the ideology of the Kim family. That's life in North Korea. So North Koreans will walk along the train tracks and you know that there's a hymnal of songs of praise to Kim Il-sung and they'll they'll take those songs and they'll they'll belt out verse 1 that everybody knows. But along the train tracks you have a much better view of who's in front of you, who's behind you and what's on the sides. So when they get to verse 2 and verse 3, they get to sing the Christian lyrics and they do at the top of their lungs. When they walk through the marketplace, they pray. They don't, they, they don't sneak into a corner to pray. They could be praying right in front of you as a, as, a, as a North Korean state security agent, and you wouldn't know they were praying because they would say, like, for example, aren't we so uh, fortunate that the dear leader who's watching over us all cares so much for us that for Todd's grandson, we, we can be confident that the, the sniffles that he woke up this morning, that the dear leader knows and cares about that and will take care of that. That wasn't a praise to Kim Jong Un. That was a prayer. That it's kind of in code, and if if yes, you were a, a border and guard it, and you heard them saying it, you wouldn't think anything about it. But, absolutely. But what they're right. saying is talking to the Lord. So I guess what I want to emphasize is North Korean Christians are not hunkered down, hiding out, sneaking out in force. They're they're carrying on their everyday lives, and people are simply not aware. And so that's that's what makes them so so powerful, in my opinion, in the Lord because they're not hiding their lamp under a bushel. So people say, oh, yes, do they tithe? Then I say, absolutely. How do you tithe? Well, in the marketplace, you accidentally overpay vendors who are badly in need because they have sick children and in dealing with constant issues of hunger. So you tithe by overpaying in ways that cause people to think that you're careless or foolish. A very common aspect of North Korean Christian life is, is that they understand that they'll likely end their life in a concentration camp. And so they prepare for faithful witness in a concentration camp. So their Christian life is different from beginning to end than ours. We're talking this week on Voice of the Martyrs Radio with Dr. Eric Foley. He is the CEO of VOM Korea, our sister office in Seoul. One of the things that you at, at VOM Korea do is radio broadcasts into 
North Korea, a gospel radio broadcast, people sharing their testimonies, people reading the scriptures. I feel like I should congratulate you. Recently, the North Korean government has worked very hard to jam those radio broadcasts. So apparently they are successful. Apparently they're effective because the North Korean government is worried enough about it. They wouldn't waste resources jamming broadcasts they didn't worry about. So we do five radio broadcasts a day, and and our broadcast is Bible, right? It's reading the Bible, and it is also the preaching by current modern-day North Korean Christians of the sermons of the early Korean Christians. So we started doing this broadcast in 2005, sorry, or 2006, sorry. The reason why we started was because North Korean Christians told us, they said there were two things that they wanted us to do. You know, one was balloons, and the other was, was the radio broadcast. And so with the radio, what they were saying is, is that, yes, there was Christian radio that was being broadcast into North Korea, but it was it was done from a South Korean mindset and a South Korean dialect. And the dialects are about 40 percent different. And what we found was the best way to reflect that was simply through the sermons of the early Korean Christians. We started doing this radio broadcast. And the interesting thing was immediately it attracted the jamming of the North Korean government. But we've increased the number of broadcasts that we did. We used to do one. Now we do five. We used to do them in the evening. Now we do them throughout the daytime. You know, even now when listeners hear this broadcast, I would say, hey, please stop for a moment and pray for the broadcast because one, one will be happening either at that moment or soon. It's, it's a fight every night and every day. And so we have, to, we have to really rely on the power of prayer. And so what we like to say is pray that God jams the jamming efforts of the North Korean government. We're talking this week on Voice of the Martyrs Radio with Dr. Eric Foley. He is the author of a book called These Are the Generations. We will give you a link to get a copy of that when you come and visit us at vomradio.net. Talk a little bit about the balloons and and what's happening today, because I know the same level of, of technological expertise you're bringing to the radio broadcast, you're also bringing that to the balloon launches as well. Talk about how that works and What's happening with with getting God's word attached to balloons yeah. floating over into the hermit kingdom? Well, you know, I think it's really interesting. And the news uh, Americans especially are now talking a lot about balloons, yeah. aren't they? And <laughs> even today around the world, people could not imagine the number literally in the tens of thousands of balloons that are launched every day for all kinds of scientific purposes of weather, everything like that. Balloons are great. Balloons are high tech. And balloons are not antiquated in any way, shape, or form. Um, the balloons that we're talking about are, are just what you think of as ordinary weather balloons. And they're all different kinds of sizes, and um, but they're environmentally friendly in that they, they pop and there's no trace left of them because they're made of latex and they're biodegradable. You can attach GPS devices to them to track precisely where they go. So if you were to ask the question, what accounts for the, the number of people in North Korea seeing a Bible with their own eyes jumping from basically zero to almost 8% in 20 years. The answer is balloons delivering about 40 to 50,000 Bibles a year into North Korea in a variety of forms, printed and electronic. You'll notice that I've, I'm using some ambiguity in my verb tenses. Um, as you know, and it's true of Voice of the Martyrs, uh, all over the world, but we don't comment on our current field operations of what we are or are not doing. And there's a very good reason for that, because in, in March 2021, a law was passed in South Korea that criminalizes not only the launching of balloons, but the movement of anything across the border, even by the internet. Right. So this is not this is not just an anti-balloon law. This is a if you're moving north <laughs> across the border with information even by internet. The only thing that's not included in that is radio, praise God. But even at that point in 2021, they said, yeah, we're looking at radio to determine how best to deal with that too. So we, we can't say officially what we are or not doing because it is now criminal to, to bring a Bible into North Korea from any country using any medium. And and it's criminal in South Korea, not not in not under Kim Jong Un's government, under the South Korean government, it's criminal. You know, of course, I was arrested in June 2020, and I was charged with three counts related to balloon launching. At at that, that time, this was before the balloon law was passed, so they they focused on charges like the transport of helium and even charges related to uh, public advertising, and and I went through. Uh, the series of, of interrogations with Interpol 
12 hour days and this constant yelling. And I, I kept thinking every night I would come home. And of course, I certainly don't want to compare it to what our brothers and sisters experience in other countries. I not, I don't want to compare that. But what I what I can tell you is that for myself, I would stand there in the shower and I would have my head against whatever you call it, the tiles of the shower. And I would say, what is going on? You know, and and after the first interrogation session. And I mean, they come with these huge stacks of documents of photos of me, surveillance photos, receipts of things from my private receipt, you know, like everything you can imagine. And they're asking questions about, um, you know, that, that they're, they're exploring whether I'm a political operative. Uh, the, you know, the guy, well, a guy was running for president said that, that I was a spy and then he said, I was doing this for publicity and then I was doing it for money. And of course, it's really funny because of the fact that, you know, I, I'm a missionary. I have to raise my own support so I don't get any money from balloons. Right. So they're exploring all of these crazy things. Uh, and so but that night I was in the shower, my head against the wall. And I said, is it worth it? And immediately I said, Lord, if you would just let me launch one more then I would be grateful. That's, that's it. Just one more. And so, um, you know, at a later time when we're together, I can tell you um, <laughs> how that happened. We have to leave it in this great cloud of obscurity, right? Because I can say that voice of the martyrs continues to be bringing Bibles into North Korea through a variety of means. I simply can't say what they are at this point. Um, but, but what I can say is, is that, I, what I learned in that moment was not about, it wasn't any lesson about persecution or suffering or anything. What I learned was the value of the word of God. And so I think we have to be really careful um, that we don't glorify suffering for suffering's sake or persecution for persecution's sake. Our focus is on faithful witness, right? And that's, that's always been true in Voice of the Martyrs. We're not, vo you know, we're not voice of persecution. Right? We share stories of persecution, but they're stories about persecution in response to faithful witness, faithful witness to the word of God and the power of Christ to reveal himself fully through that word and that word alone. And so what I realized, that was a turning point in my life because I realized that getting God's word anywhere, even a single copy of it, is worth whatever price you have to pay. That's the basic lesson that Pastor Wormbrandt lived, taught, and embedded in Voice of the Martyrs. And so um, that still happens today around the world, certainly still happens for us. And so even though I, I couch it all in a great deal of obscurity, what I can say with confidence is, is that today it is illegal from any country to bring a Bible into North Korea. Today, Voice of the Martyrs continues to find ways to get Bibles into North Korea. Dr. Foley, as, as we finish up, we always like to leave listeners with ways to pray. Uh, we've talked about the the radio broadcast and, and the challenge of of getting around the jammers or jamming the jammers. We've talked about delivery of the scriptures into North Korea, some of the challenges. Certainly those are things we can have our listeners pray for. Are there other specific things that we can pray for the ministry of VOM Korea, for the gospel work inside North Korea? Just kind of equip us to pray this week for this ministry. North Korea, for the 20 years that we've been involved, it's never a steady state. It's never a static situation. There's always new challenges emerging. So I think the popular picture that's wrong, um, it's hard to imagine how things, why would things get worse? How could they get worse? They've always been as bad as they've ever been. And so when you say it's worse, aren't you just exaggerating? But what I would say is no. When you look at the things that are true, which is again, not truckloads of Bibles coming in at the bottom of rice bags, not people sneaking out to forests in the middle of the night. What's true is individuals, ones and twos, moving Bibles by ones and twos. And so we talk about you know, what's amazing is, is that not only, you know, things are getting much harder in, in this work. And again, the reason, a big reason why is the criminalization of this kind of activity in South Korea. So, so now, why is it harder? Because in an area where, where we were standing now becomes criminalized, right? Um, so that's a new challenge. Um, in addition to that, the, um, uh, you know, we we're facing challenges like North Korea's increase in technology, its ability to intercept cell phone signals. 
We've always said the front line of North Korean ministry is not the border between China and North Korea. It is here in South Korea where more than 60% of North Korean defectors are in regular monthly contact with their relatives. So when North Korea improves exponentially its ability to more quickly and accurately detect cell phone signals, that impacts our ability to share the gospel with the relatives of North Korean defectors still inside North Korea. So new challenges, these are constantly changing. So it's, it's not about saying, oh, it was bad before, but it's worse now. What I'm saying is the level of challenge requires every time a new challenge requires a new response. We have to step up our game. And fortunately, God has continued to do that. It's not about human creativity, but God has continued to open the door, new tools, new people. And so we always say we have a next man up off the bench attitude because in North Korea, people are always being martyred. That is a fact of Christian life. And so it's a new generation of believers having to learn what the last generation had hard won, but the teaching begins from zero. So yes, it's a new set of challenges. And so people should never pray as though they say, well, yeah, not a lot's changed. Everything's changing every day. Who's in charge of every area is changing because people are being martyred every day. The technology to jam is improving. Technology to detect cell phone signals is improving. Criminalization of activity in South Korea. You look at it on a human level, you, you tear your hair out and say, how is it possible? And yet in the midst of that, God doubled the number of Bibles each year during COVID and made that a center of Christian activity. So it's happening and it happens because people pray. So don't pray for imaginary romantic pictures. You know, listen to this broadcast. Listen to it again. I, I, you know, I'm not trying to sell the book. These are the generations, but read the book because it'll, it'll help you figure out how to pray. Definitely um, the Voice of the Martyrs newsletter. You know, we're constantly supplying uh, information that the Voice of the Martyrs publishes on the website, social media, newsletter can help you pray knowledgeably. But I just listed off some new technologies. And what I would say is it's, it's not about technology. It's about people. It's about brand new Christians being trained to be Christian and, and, and carrying on the legacy of what they've received before. Pray for all of these new Christians every day. Pray for the people who today will receive Bibles, uh, audio Bibles um, in, in work camps, whether that be in Russia or in China or in Southeast Asia or even in Eastern Europe or the Middle East. Pray for new Christians growing up to be the North Korean underground church of today, right? Because it has to constantly be replenished. Even though the church is growing faster in North Korea than South Korea, as it takes a lot of Christians dying every month uh, for that growth to continue. So pray, pray for these new generation of believers. It is, like I said, don't pray about technology. Don't pray about leaders, you know, of changing leadership in the country. Pray that Kim Jong-un will come to know Christ. That's what the North Korean Christians pray. But pray mainly for this new generation of believers that's been raised up daily and that all they know is the word of God. And that is sufficient to carry on the work of the most persecuted church in the world. Amen. I, uh, I love every chance we get to chat. I love it, especially when we get to record and share these conversations with our listeners. Dr. Eric Foley, again, the CEO of EOM Korea based in Seoul, the author of a book called These Are the Generations. We'll give you a link to order a copy when you visit us at vomradio.net. Pastor Foley, thank you so much for being our guest this week on Voice of the Martyrs Radio. Thank you for your work, uh, literally at great personal risk, the work that you do. Uh, we appreciate it. And thanks for sharing this week with us. Hey, Todd, uh, it's always worth it. It's always worth it. And thank you for what you do, getting good, accurate information out to people. That is a real ministry. And I, I hope listeners are praying for you in that work, too. Well, I, I know that some are. I do get the emails from people who say, hey, we, we're praying for you, and I so appreciate that. I know you appreciate the people that lift up our work in prayer as well. Until next time, Dr. Foley, we, we will try not to wait for two or three years this time. We will uh, we'll try to get you back sooner than that. But thank you again for being our guest. Hey, always a pleasure, Todd. Thank you. God bless you. You've been listening to The Voice of the Martyrs Radio. As always, if you just happen to be joining us at this point, go to vomradio.net, find this episode of the broadcast, or find VOM Radio wherever you listen to podcasts. And I hope you will this week pray especially 
for our brothers and sisters living in North Korea, as we have talked about so many ways to pray for them, so many needs that they have, and pray that the gospel will continue to advance. And I think about uh, 8% of the people having seen a Bible, uh, let's pray that a year from now, that's 15% or 12% or 50%. Uh, God can do amazing things. So I encourage you to pray for North Korea this week. And I encourage you to join us again next week to hear more about what God is doing around the world right here on the Voice of the Martyrs Radio Network.